Hello everyone, this is Pastor Britt Strohecker and welcome to Closer to God, episode 42. Now, some of you may know that I tried to do this episode live on Facebook, but unfortunately, like everything else in 2020, something went wrong. And I found out it was the Wi-Fi connection in my laptop. For some reason, it decided to quit right towards the tail end of that live broadcast. And I'm like, great, we're not done. And now we got to really start over here because we kind of left people hanging. And the reason why I'm thinking we got to start over is I didn't want a chance getting into another live and having the same thing happen. So to be on the safe side, I decided to tape this and then post it up on the internet so that way we don't get interrupted again so let's hope everything goes okay while we're taping this okay and, and you know speaking of 2020 how's it been going for you guys i know if i ask you that question a lot of you're going to be saying man this has not been the best of years and i'm tired of the stuff that has been happening with this year or maybe you might be saying i'm tired with this year all together i'm done with it well you're not done with it because there's still six more months to go in it and today's the first day of those next six months so let's do what jesus recommends okay let's not worry about tomorrow because i know there's a whole bunch of rumors out there about um, the economic collapse that may be coming because of the measures taken for the pandemic uh, another pandemic disease or illness it may be lurking about in the wings and, and threatening to come to the United States like the last one did. You know, all kinds of stuff like that. Jesus told us, look, don't worry about tomorrow because sufficient is the evil unto thereof. That's what he said. That's the King James Version. What he's saying is, you know what, tomorrow's going to have its own problems. Let's focus on today. Another truck going up the road. Um, yeah. My roadway has been pretty active with like all these dump trucks and stuff lately. I don't know what's going on. I probably should take a trip up there at some point to see what's going on. But anyway, um, you know, Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about things that haven't happened yet because, you know, that's in the future. Okay. Your focus needs to be on today. What are you going to do about things today? Okay. And don't worry about the past. We can't change anything of the past. Okay. We got to focus on today and what are we going to do to make today great okay so i was thinking about this and i thought you know what yeah we can all sit around and complain that 2020 hasn't been the best of years but we still got six months to go so why not try to turn this year around you know the positive thing to do would be like okay look let's face it there's stuff happening that we have no control over okay so let's make the best of things and let's try to make the second half of this year much better than the first half of this year and uh, I know some of you are saying yeah well that's easier said than done and that's not going to be uh, as easy as you think or as possible as you think because we still got this that and the other thing going on I'm not worried about all that okay I'm not taking it lightly and don't read into that you know or anything like that but I, I, I'm just thinking to myself okay what can we do what is available to us and what does God want us to do to make the second half of this year work better because you know what every day that we receive in this life is a gift from God so we can't waste it sitting around moping about the circumstances that we're in and the things that are going on instead we got to think okay God, what do you want me to do today? What do you want me to accomplish today? Where do you want me to go today? What direction do you want me to take uh, in this life, um, regardless of the circumstances going on? And, you know, if you think about it, you look at Jesus' ministry, he faced a lot of hardships. He faced a lot of criticism. He, he faced a lot of persecution. He faced a lot of negative things, but yet he made the most of every day of his ministry. So if we're going to follow in his footsteps, let's try to make the most of every day that we have in this life and really start focusing and concentrating on how we're going to make the rest of this year much better than the first part of this year. So now that we're over, it feels like we're over the hump, you know, and some of you are saying, I ah, don't say that. I know there's going to be a lot of disagreement. I'm not here to spark any arguments or any debates or anything like that. But, um, 
now that we're at the point where we are, let's move on, okay? Let's move forward. Let's do the things that God is calling us to do today. Let's follow the direction that God wants us to go today, you know? Because if we sit around moping, we're wasting time that God is gifting to us in this life, okay? Every moment, every heartbeat, everything that we have is a blessing from God. So let's be appreciative of it and let's make the most of things, okay? I think I've said enough on that. So here we go. Let's pray and then we'll get into the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. And we thank you for the opportunities that you will give to us this day. And help us always to spend our days with you, talking to you in conversation and prayer. And also getting to know you better through your holy word. And getting to uh, glean your wisdom and your truth from your word so that we can apply it to the situations that we're facing in our lives this day. And help us, Lord, Lord, to have a focus not only on you, but on the plans and the purpose and the calling that you have in our lives for this day. Help us to stay firmly focused on you and not be distracted by the devil or anything that's going to take us off track or knock us off track or derail us in any way. So, Lord, help us to do these things and be with us now through the power and inspiration of your Holy Spirit as we go through your holy word we pray this in jesus name amen okay as you guys know um we've been going through the gospel of mark if you've been following these episodes so we're on episode 42 of this because we're taking each particular section of mark and we're breaking it down into different occurrences and events that were recorded of jesus's earthly ministry okay so we're in chapter 9 we're going to finish chapter 9 today so if you want to follow along in your bible we're at mark chapter 9 and we're going to start at verse 38 and if you want to find mark quick and easy go to the new testament that's towards the back of the bible first book you're going to find in the new testament is matthew if you go to the next book that's where mark is okay and we're at Mark chapter 9 and we're going to go down to verse I almost said scroll down we're going to we're going to scroll down to verse 38 we're going to go down to verse 38 okay technology isn't it something that's already been a, a headache for me today but look how much it influences our lives okay so today's topic is going to be using the name of Jesus you know uh, and we're going to find where John is coming to Jesus with a complaint that he found somebody in a ministry other than theirs using Jesus's name. So here's what happens at verse 38. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw a man using your name to cast out demons, but we told him to stop because he isn't one of our group. Don't stop him, Jesus said. No one who performs miracles in my name will soon be able to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. If anyone gives you a cup of water because you belong to the Messiah, I assure you that person will be rewarded. So let's stop right there. Here John is complaining. Look, this dude's out there trying to steal our thunder, okay? He's out there using your name and performing miracles. Aren't we the ones that should be doing that? Isn't that exclusively us doing this at this time? And Jesus is like, no. You're misunderstanding the situation here because Jesus knows in the future when the church does things and when people as, that are his followers do things, they're going to do things in his name. Uh, the Bible teaches us that if we pray and ask for anything in the name of Jesus, God's going to hear that prayer. He's going to provide an answer to that prayer that he sees fit in, in the timing he thinks is right for that answer to occur and that's why we have to have faith and trust in that but we know that if we ask in jesus name the father will hear it and will give us an answer to that prayer okay also uh when we do things in the name of jesus we need to make sure that we are actually doing them the way jesus would want us to be doing things and following his example and making sure that we're focusing um, the attention on him and not ourselves where he receives the glory he receives the respect he receives the adoration for the things that we do in his name so he's trying to tell John here look it's okay that this guy's using my name because if he's not against us he's with us he's for us okay and that's uh, something that they have to appreciate because in the future 
they're going to have to take the responsibility of spreading the gospel, the good news of the gospel, and building up the body of Christ and expanding the body of Christ across to every corner of the globe. And he's telling them here, you can't put restrictions on anything that has to do with the gospel, okay? Because if we try to put restrictions on the gospel, which some people try to do in today's world, they try to say, well, this part of the Bible really doesn't apply to today's world because we have grown beyond the the what the people were like in Bible times. Well, that's a false teaching. That is a false testimony. Uh, don't follow that because it's not true. What God says, it doesn't change. It doesn't change. And if you look at stuff in the Bible, you're going to find that it's just as applicable today as it was back then. Because you have to look beyond the peoples of the time and the peoples of the time that we live in. You have to look at what's the heart of the message. What is the heartbeat of God that we're trying to feel the pulse of from reading his word? And that's where we're going to glean the lessons that God wants to teach us. And that's where we're going to find out more about who God is and how he thinks and how he operates. Now, we'll never reach his level because he's God. His ways and his thinking are always going to be higher than ours. But we can get to know him better and he wants us to get to know him better. In fact, he wants that personal relationship with us by reading about the things he wants to teach us through his word. Okay. So, and, and Jesus is saying, look, you know, if, if somebody is going to do something for you because of Jesus, they are going to be rewarded. And what he's saying here is, is that uh, when we do things that Jesus taught us to do, you know, remember what he said, you know, when you see me thirsty, you, uh, you know, you give me a cup of, to, of water to drink. If you saw me hungry, you gave me food to eat. And the disciples said, well, when did we ever do any of these things for you, master? He says, whenever you do for one of the least of these, you're doing it for me. Remember that passage? So that's the whole spirit and the principle behind what Jesus is trying to convey here, okay? So at verse 42, he says, but if anyone causes one of these little ones who trust in me to lose faith, now there's children around him, uh, and he's also talking about those people who are new to the faith, that are kind of in the infancy of their faith in God, okay? It would be better for that person to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around the neck. Boy, that's pretty harsh. You know, so he's saying, look, people that draw people away from God are people that we should avoid. And those who do that face a lot of condemnation for what they are doing. Okay, that's what he's saying here. Okay, if your hand causes you to sin, this is at verse 43, cut it off. It is better to enter heaven with only one hand than to go into the unquenchable fires of hell with two hands. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better to enter heaven with only one foot than to be thrown into hell with two feet. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. It is better to enter the kingdom of God half blind than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worm never dies and the fire never goes out. Okay, let's talk about this, okay? Face it, if one of us did this in today's world, you know, think about it, you go to Hershey Med Center, what happened, well, Hershey Med Center is kind of close to where I'm at, um, you know, what happened that you lost your hand? Well, I cut it off. Don't you think they're going to ask some questions about why in the world would you do something like that, or your foot, or why would you gouge your eye out, you know, even the people around you, oh, oh man, did you hear what they did, you know, and we shouldn't be talking like that, you know, um, because the Bible speaks out against gossip in many different ways. But, you know, people talk. And if you gouge your eye out or cut your hand off or cut your foot off, you can imagine what is going to be thought of you and said about you in today's world. But what is Jesus really trying to say here? That's what's important, okay? Let's look at these different body parts. And he's saying, cut it off, all right? Um, the bottom line here is that if our hands, these are the tools that we use to do things, okay? We use them to type, we use them to weed the garden, which uh, that's a, 
especially in this heat. Oh, boy. But anyway, it's got to be done, right? So, you know, these are the tools that we use to do things in life. So if we are using our tools to do that which God will not honor or that which is sin, then we need to stop or cut off those things that we're doing that cause us to sin. So, you know, if we're motivated to do something uh, that is sinful, then we need to understand that that motivation is needs to be cut out of our life. We need to stop doing those things because they are tearing us away from God. And in the end, they could condemn us, all right? The wages of sin is death, remember that? And some of you are saying, well, Jesus paid our sin debt in full on the cross. Yes, he did. But we have to be mindful of is if we don't take that seriously and we continuously sin, it could lead to some condemnation and judgment for us uh, when judgment day comes. So God is saying, look, if you're motivated to do things that draw you away from me or lead you into sin, you got to cut those things off, whatever they are, from your life. You have to identify them and cut them off so that you're not drawn into sin or tempted to sin. Same thing with the feet. Why would he mention the feet? Well, the feet are how we travel and go places. So um, what he's saying there is avoid the places where you can go that are going to draw you into sin. And there are bad places out there where there's many temptations to sin. There's situations uh, that we, we can walk into that would lead us into sin. And if we know that that's what's going to happen, then we need to cut those situations off. So the things that uh, cause us to act and do things uh, to sin should be cut off. And the places where we go, if we're in a place where... Uh, we are drawn into sin. We need to cut that place off. We need to stop going to those places. We need to identify those places as triggers for our sin. And we need to cut them off and cut them out of our lives. Okay? Same thing is if we, the things that we observe, and this includes not only our eyes, but our ears, you know, uh, what we observe, what we hear, what we speak, what we allow into our minds. You know, it's that old adage, you put garbage in here, you're going to get garbage out of your life. You put garbage in deep within here, in your heart, in your character, you're going to get garbage out, okay? There are good characters in this world and bad characters in this world. So the things that you are consuming with your senses, if they lead you into sin, you need to cut those things out of your life. So I know, I don't know, I did a good job of explaining all that, but you know, your hands do things. So whatever motivates you to do something that is sinful, cut it out of your life, okay? Your feet take you places. If there's a place you go and in, in a situation that you find yourself in that would lead you into sin, you need to cut those situations and those atmospheres and in those environments out of your life, okay? If there's something that you are looking at or listening to or speaking or talking about or thinking about you need to cut those things off if they are leading you into sinful behavior this is what Jesus is telling us because if we continue to do these things and don't cut it off we're facing judgment for them and they could tear us away from God and that's the ultimate goal of the Satan he wants to tear you away from your relationship with God he wants you to feel unworthy he wants you to feel that it's okay to do these things because there's going to be no consequences for them rest assured Jesus is saying yes there are consequences for your sin so that's why you need to cut it out of your life so he's trying to convey some very critical information to us and using this analogy to explain to us look the things you do the places you go and the things that you consume could lead you into a bad place or lead you into sin 
and that leads you away from God and it could lead you into judgment. Does that make sense? Hopefully so. At verse 49 then, he continues to say here, and let me make sure we got everything over here. Yeah. At verse 49, he continues to say, for everyone will be purified with fire. So what does he mean by that? Well, we've talked about this before in other devotionals. When you want to purify a precious metal, you heat it up with fire to the point where it melts and it becomes a liquid state. And when it's in its liquid state, any impurities that are within that metal will start burning off and start consolidating and solidifying and floating up to the surface of that liquid metal. And then the person that's doing the purification will scoop those impurities off and toss them aside and discard them because they're not uh, valuable they have no value and by doing that they increase the value of the metal that they are trying to purify all right they increase its worth and its value and its strength in some way by ridding it of the impurities and that's what Jesus is saying here this is what God wants to do for you you need to cut things out of your life that lead you into sin why because it's part of the purification and sanctification process that you go through once you are saved and that continues until the day the Lord calls you home and he's gonna be out there and you're gonna find yourself under the test where temptation is testing you and sin is testing you and you're gonna find that if you turn to God in those situations and seek his assistance he's gonna be the person that's taking these impurities that are coming up to the surface that you are identifying and seeing for yourself and then giving to God and when you give it to God he's the one that's gonna scoop these impurities out and discard them from your life making you a better stronger pure uh, healthier person uh, where you are free from the effects and the shackles and the enslavement of those sins so that's what Jesus is talking about here and then at verse 50 he further says salt is good for seasoning but if it loses its flavor how do you make it salty again you must have the qualities of salt among yourselves and live in peace with each other now salt why does he use that as an example and can salt lose its saltiness well yes it can and if it loses its saltiness then all it is is basically sand right it's just dirt uh basically and why would you want to use it to add flavor to anything you know dirt and sand really don't add flavor to anything you know uh, think about it it's true because if you go to the beach and you like those french fries that they serve at the boardwalk uh how do you like your fries if sand gets into them not so good right sand does nothing for the fries and that's what it's talking about here if salt loses its flavor then um, can you make it salty again no you cast it aside because it, it's no longer any good okay and uh, it doesn't add anything to the flavor of what you're eating and um, that's what he's talking about if you lose your character and your effectiveness and do not utilize the spiritual gifts that you have been given by the Holy Spirit and blessed with by God when he created you the gifts skills abilities and talents that you possess if you're not using them uh, to uh, glorify God and also to add to the flavor of his creation around you if you become ineffective and don't produce any good fruit in your life you are in danger of being discarded okay judged for those things all right uh, for squandering your potential you know um, it says here you must have the qualities of salt among yourselves and live in peace with each other what God is saying is salt is a preservative used in many foods okay sometimes overused in many foods and sometimes leading to health problems for all of us I mean look at the salt content and some of the stuff that we buy from the grocery store it's unbelievable so but um, salt is very effective as a preservative and if we want to preserve what's important about the good news of the gospel and about faith and trust in God then we need to be salty we need to be that preservative where we're sharing the good news of the gospel with other people and we're sharing the things that we have learned from God and we're sharing our testimony of what God has done for us in our lives so that people are motivated and inspired to feel that 
maybe I need to look into God. Maybe I need to look into Jesus to see what I'm missing. And if they take a good, sincere, honest look at Jesus, they're going to find that they're missing out on the best things in life, or that they could have a better life, and that the things that they're experiencing in life and their situation that they're currently in in life isn't all there is. There's so much more to life. And that's what Jesus is saying here. We need to be that saltiness, you know, that's going to spike some uh, flavor into this life, you know, because if, if you lose, if life loses its flavor, then it's kind of like just merely existing, like salt. You know, when salt loses its favor, flavor, all it is is just merely existing and it doesn't produce anything and it's not worth much and it, and it doesn't add anything uh, to the food that it that is added to. So this is the analogy that Jesus is trying to use for us and think about this man this is only a, a the last part of chapter 9 but he's saying a ton here as far as look you guys got to start focusing on the right things and you need to get rid of all the things that are drawing you away from what's right and then you have to be a catalyst to the your sphere of influence so that people can see the beauty and the glory and the power of the Lord and how he wants to have that personal relationship with the, with them and empower their lives so that they can have abundant living and they can have a good life and they have things to look forward to and they feel like they have a purpose. They feel like there's a plan for their life and they feel like there's a calling for them to answer in their life. You know, when people have those things, it's part of the basic desires and needs that we talked about at Unchained the other night. Uh, the, you know, there's basic needs that each human being has and each person wants to feel that they have a worth and that they have a value that they can add to the world around them and that they can be appreciated by others and they have a purpose uh, and a meaning for their life. These are the ways that we find it through the Lord and this is what Jesus is emphasizing to us. You know, if you want to experience these things, if you truly want these things, then get rid of the impurities that are holding you back or polluting you and keeping you from living out your best. So, um, what, what a powerful, powerful passage that we went through here today. So let's, let's give thanks to the Lord on that. Lord, we thank you so much for the information that you have shared with us today through your holy word. Um, and what a powerful message this was for us today and how much value this adds to our self-worth and the living that we're trying to achieve, Lord. These are the things that we need to know that are essential for us to find life is good, life can be abundant, and life is to be enjoyed, and life is a gift and a blessing that we should never squander. So, Lord, we thank you for these teachings today, and we give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor that you deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, thank you for sharing this time with me today. I know we went a little longer than other times, but um, I think we got through a lot of good stuff today, a lot of good stuff that's important for us to consider, uh, especially considering how this year has been going. So if we really want to make this second half a better second half to this year, here's the things what we read about today that we need to start with in order to make that happen. So until next time, remember, nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ. I'll talk to you soon.